The witness is a portal to your IQ test. There are these screens lying around, and solving the screen's tests will open doors, activate elevators, or extend bridges. Most of what you'll be doing will be drawing continuous lines on grids of varying sizes. Otherwise, the game is a walking simulator. When you're playing a puzzle game that's only a puzzle game, you use what's at your character's disposal in order to find a solution. In The Witness, certainly you have to solve a lot of puzzles, but the island is one big art installation, and a lot of the time, you'll peruse an area because you want to see what's over there. Everything's colorful, abstract, and weird. By the time you've passed the first gate, you'll have familiarized yourself with the line-on-grid gimmick, and the game will begin to throw more constraints your way. What's cool about these myriad constraints is that the game non-verbally shows you how they work. If you speak English and you have a bootleg Chinese copy of the game, you'll still be able to excel at it. The pause menu will be the biggest challenge. Either you'll connect the dots yourself, or you'll stay where you are. Consider the following abomination. You need to use the line to draw these yellow rectangles. Each of these rectangles needs to be drawn by the line at the suggested orientation, and whatever shapes the line draws need to include the squares in which the yellow rectangles reside. You can also make a continuous shape that includes any number of suggested rectangles at their proper orientation, and as long as the squares containing the yellow rectangles are inside the continuous shape, then you have a valid solution. Literally, the game described all of this to me without using any words. There are also times when you need to use the environment to solve the grid puzzles. You'll have to use tree branches and shadows as stencils for whatever lines you draw. I'm tempted to say that there's no narrative, but uttering that feels like a fraction of the truth. Rather, the narrative is supplanted by the fact that the game is like an art installation. What do I mean by that? First of all, everything looks cool to me. I enjoy both the exploration of each area and the diversity across the whole island. There's a desert, there's a zen garden, there's a ropes course, there's a town. These locations don't have much business being next to each other, and that's what makes the environment so cool. This diversity forces you to pay attention to detail, as you need to use the environment to solve many of the puzzles. Also, what little verbal narrative exists is another enigma for you to solve. There's no feeling tantamount to that upon completing a beautifully challenging game, especially when you've gone out of your way to accomplish finer achievements, such as finding any collectible that uncovers a secret story. The Witness is the rare, genuinely relaxing game. There's virtually no music, there's no spectacular agility and slaughter, there's no leveling up because while leveling up is stimulating, it's easy. You sit there, you click stuff, you wait for the NPC to shut up, you're there and you have a new ability, but it's passive, so you rinse and repeat. The Witness is hard, but not because you're going to die a lot. You can't even take fall damage because the game doesn't let you jump or fall. It's hard because you need to open a notebook in front of your friends and start drawing grids like a crazy person. Now, if the game is hard and it doesn't have enticing conventions like leveling up and objectives, then how do you feel you've made progress? Again, without telling you anything, the game clarifies this. Laser beams are scattered across the island. One laser beam corresponds to any of the puzzle areas. If you solve most or all screens in an area, then this completion activates the area's laser, and the laser will fire at a mountaintop. So while you won't necessarily know how many lasers there are, you'll have that satisfactory relief of having solved the problem. The lasers are appropriate stopping points. Activating each of them roughly takes the same amount of time. Speaking of distinct puzzle areas, they're mostly self-contained. In other words, you have the tools you need for every area from the get-go, so you can't do them in the wrong order. I concede that the town and the maze will hurt you. You have to solve most other areas before the town and the maze make sense. But every other area in the game requires no experience from a different area. And I think that's creative and cool too. Instead of new abilities, the game has new rules. So if you want to play The Witness with all your upgrades, then play it again. There's your new game plus. Anyway, I've played The Witness twice now, so I don't see myself playing it again. Still, I recommend it. It's good for two playthroughs. Lots of games are only good for one. It's about 12 hours long, too. As with Braid, in terms of visual art, sound design, and gameplay, The Witness is phenomenal. Thecla Inc.'s incredible effort is crystal clear. I mention a housekeeping thing. Jonathan Blow is the guy who made both Braid and The Witness, but the name of the company responsible for Braid was Number None, and the company responsible for The Witness was Thecla Inc. The one caveat is that the game's pricey. It's a $40 indie puzzle game. If you go for the package that contains both The Witness and Braid, then that whole thing is $43. So weigh your options. But these games are for your bucket list. You have to play them before you die.